we all get sad and feel depressed if we don't feel we're good enough, right? Think about that emotion. Not feeling good enough or not feeling liked or loved is the foundation for all your worries, all the things that bug you. With all the opportunities that exist today, why haven't you reached your next level of income, life, and wealth? In most cases, we've been lied to. We've been told that if you find the right opportunity and you work hard, you can be successful. And that's simply not true. Millionaires, billionaires, and successful people have realized you need the foundation for wealth, the habits. And that's exactly what you'll be learning on the Millionaire Success Habits Podcast. All success starts here. What's up, what's up? Today I want to talk about the term cause and effect and how that can be so important to your happiness, your success, your joy, right? That all goes together. Money without happiness is, is pointless. Uh, my, you know, uh, happiness without money, can you can still struggle, so why not have it all, right? So cause and effect is, is something I've been thinking a lot about lately because I've been having deep conversations with my kids about it. Yes. I take so much of the stuff that I share with you and I work it on my kids. They're 9 and 11. If it fits with them, it can fit with all of us because back then we were just innocent and and it really gives us a simple way to look through. We give this set of glasses to someone who hasn't been tarnished. So there's they're just amazing. They're just amazing to run things by. So, cause and effect. Let's just say, for example, my son's on a football team. He plays flag and a couple of the kids are rough on him. And my, my son's sensitive, so I'm not blaming them. And, and, uh, and my kid, uh, Brody, is a little on the, like, he gets really offended when people aren't nice to him. He's not the typical boy that just brush it off and like, it bothers him. And I talked about cause and effect. And I've been coaching uh, Little League and baseball and softball and flag football pretty much for six years, almost every year, as an assistant coach, right? So I'm always there. And if I'm not the coach, like I'm not a coach at all on his flag football team this year, but I go to every single practice when I'm in town, I just sit and watch. So when, when I do two seasons a year for six years, I got 12 seasons under my belt of seeing the different dads that come in. And I, I, I just want you to know I'm not judging. We're all different. Some people have to work so much they don't have time to go. My parents never went to any of my stuff. And I turned out just fine, so I'm not judging. I just want you to really understand cause and effect here. So I watched two boys that were rough on my son. Just pick on him, they'd pull his hat off, they'd throw it in the woods, they'd, they'd you know, kick over his water bottle, they'd throw the ball at him hard when it was time to get him, his flag, so they'd walk by and yank his flags off and throw them. It's like stupid shit. So my son gets really offended because he thinks it's something he did, right? We, we boil down, uh, if we boil down all of our biggest fears, the things that bug us the most, it's are we liked and are we good enough? I mean, we all get fend we all get sad and feel depressed if we don't feel we're good enough, right? Think about that emotion. Not feeling good enough or not feeling liked or loved is the foundation for all your worries, all the things that bug you. Just the way it goes, right? So my son, I know it's hitting his I'm not loved, I'm not liked, and am I not good enough to be on this team? It's hardcore deep emotions, right? But I'm trying to teach my kids is like I'm trying to teach you and teach myself is what other people do is none of your business really that has nothing to do with you and how we let it affect it affect us is our choice so what does that got to do with cause and effect get to the point all right here's me getting to the point I watched the two boys that pick on my son or a little tough on my son not the same poor son but you know and I'm gonna go back upstream of like there's like four types of dads or moms too but I'm just to say the dads that show up there's the dad that shows up and he's engaged and just watches his son. He's just there, right? Uh, this could be games or practice. He's just there. He's a supportive, high five, drink some water. Uh, if you need something, great play. Oh, come on, hustle bud. There's that kind of dad. There's another dad that just never comes at all. There's another type of dad. I'm saying dads because I'm a dad. There's another dad that comes and I can almost see them when they come. They like... They're either very successful in their life or they played sports in their life. And I'll be honest, there's never one bit of encouragement the entire time. And this is, again, not judging. This is the choice they make. And maybe that's how they got successful. So no, no, um, uh, I'm not pigeonholing one person or pointing someone out. 
But there's a dad that comes that never says a good word, just talks about all the things they do wrong and yelling and, and grabbing and pulling the shirt and saying, well, get in there, do, why aren't you listening, why aren't you? And just all negative feedback. And there's a the last kind of dad that's kind of in the middle of all of it. But those first three, I can immediately see how they're going to treat other people just by the dad. The dad who comes and yells at their kid and is rough on them and tell them they're not good enough, they're not hustling enough, they're not fast enough, they could have done better, that's always the kid that picks on other boys. Always. Because I think he feels like his dad's picking on him. Now, I say that because of cause and effect. When Brody told me about a boy picking on him, I said, bud, let's talk about cause and effect. I said that word so many times uh, for a reason because I wanted it to be forefront in your mind. I said, if I was really rough on you and everything you did, I said, sucked and you weren't fast enough, you weren't quick enough. I'm not talking about babying you. I'm talking about being just rude and never giving credit. If you felt you were never good enough and you felt like you were getting picked on, how would you feel? He's like, I'd feel sad. I'd be mad. I said, well, and if you couldn't pick on your dad, what would you do? He's like, oh, I'd probably pick on other kids. I said, the cause was, that's the kind of relationship he has with a dad. We're not going to judge it. But the effect is he acted a certain way to you. You thought it was about you. Had nothing to do with you. It's not your business. Maybe because you're sweet, because you're very kind, you seem like an easy target. I have another example of my daughter. She has a girl that she loves to death, one of her best friends. But when this little girl doesn't get her way, it's meltdown time. It's it's everybody else's fault. And, and what we know is it bugs my daughter and it makes her sad and she's always apologizing to this girl and she wants to make it work because she loves her. But when you look at it, I'm gonna be completely transparent. This girl's parents aren't together, which is most, the majority of, of the country right now, at least in America, it's 54%. They're not together, but she doesn't see her dad a lot. And when she sees her dad, from what I've heard, I'm not judging, her dad gives her her way and buys her stuff because he feels bad, he only sees her once a week. And she's used to him protecting her no matter what. So I said to my daughter, I said, it's not her fault. She's a sweet girl, but she's used to getting her way no matter what. So when she doesn't get her way with you, she's just going back to what she knows. It has nothing to do with you. The cause was separated parents spoiling to try to make up for the separation. The effect is that results in when she doesn't get her way with you, she makes you feel bad, but she can't make you feel bad unless you give permission. So... That was a long way of saying, when you think someone is being rude to you, someone doesn't want to be the partner, the, 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 the relationship, there's no support, like all of these things that distract us from the things we really want, the money we want to make, the abundance we want to create, the company we want to create. We're letting all these things uh, uh, ding our inner confidence, the, the thing that allows us to feel loved and feels, feel worthy, feel good enough. We're allowing someone else's cause and effect to create a new result in our life. So what if from this point forward, every relationship you had, when you see the forward facing thing, the taking the hat and throwing it in the woods for my son, or the friend stomping her feet because she didn't get her way, instead of saying, what did I do? Am I good enough? Rather say, wow have empathy of realizing there was a previous cause to create that effect. Then, here's the here's the, the whole point of this lesson, then turn the mirror on yourself. What causes in your life are allowing you to affect the current? Is there a cause of the way your parents treated you that you're afraid to start your own business? Is there a cause that you got burned in a relationship and you're not opening your heart to a new one? Is there a cause that your dad treated you like shit and told you you were never good enough and the effect is you're doing a little bit of that with your kids? Start looking at it that way and you'll have empathy for others and you'll have acceptance of others and you won't let them bug you or let you feel a certain way. They won't ding your confidence and also you'll strengthen the relationships in your life because believe me, you're gonna find crap that's lingering from your childhood, from previous relationships, from your parents, that you're screwing with other people where you could fix it. We all have room for improvement. You're at this site because you're listening to this audio or watching this video because you want another level life. You're working on your personal growth. And if you already have it, go to subscribe to dean.com. That's subscribe to dean.com so you make sure you're notified for every video I do, great discounts, and you become part of the family. Guys, if you notice with the Millionaire Success Habits podcast, 
Maybe you came here because you just thought I'd give you the quick money machine. When I look back at my success and my life, when I balance the happiness I have, the fulfillment I have, with the millions and millions and millions I've been able to generate, it's a balance. Money without these type of habits means nothing. Have the habits without money, that's a struggle. Why not have it all? Remember, all success starts right here. Listen, if you like the video, make sure you click subscribe right now so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, click the notification bell so you'll know when the next one goes live. You can always follow us on Instagram, and if you don't already have millionaire success habits, you can grab it for free at deansfreebook.com. Remember, all success starts here.